So to start with, I will go to make.powerapps.com and we will create a solution. So this is a landing page for everything you should do when you're working in the Power Platform. I know many of you go straight to the Power Apps, the Canvas Studio or to the Flow portal, but I would encourage you to do it from here and to do it from within solutions because that's when you can secure your build pipeline and the whole ALM. So I am now in my wrong environment. I will select my sandbox. Well, that's a source environment I have where I have the components I've created. And I was being a sloppy guy. Uh, I created components without that and adding them to solutions. I will create a new solution. And let's just call it the ESPC20. And uh, the publisher defines who is responsible for uh, creating the solution and who is responsible for the components that have been created through it. Uh, so we have the solution here. It's now completely empty. I will start with adding existing entities because I have a few entities there. Yes, I'm that kind of guy. Uh, so we'll add an entity, add existing entities. I can search from my entities because they have the same prefix. So if I write JR, I will get all the entities I want here. And I go next, and then I get to select what I want to include here. And since these are unmanaged things, I will just include all the components for those entities. I will also say that uh, I will add an app because I have a Canvas app that I want to add here. I have my app for responsive rockets. I created it in another session, actually. Let's build a responsive Canvas app. So I added my responsive rockets. I can also add a flow here, of course from within solutions. I have it in, created it from another solution. I have some recurring thing that gets rockets. So now I basically have my solution to start working with. And then I can export it. Uh, if I have done recent changes, I might want to publish those. I can check for issues. And this is the Power Platform Checker that I was talking about, uh, also called Solution Checker. You can run it straight from here. I won't do it this time, but rather go on to uh, publishing. It will propose a new version number, uh, just uh, shifting the last digit there, and uh, ex propose to export as managed, which is what we'll do now because this solution will be importing into a target environment. So after some waiting, the export uh, completed, and I will change to my target environment, which is Jonas ESPC 20 that I created before this. So I'm going to solutions here, and then I just select import. I browse for the file, should be in my downloads folder. And then we can just click next. And I see publisher, this comes from Jonas. Nice, it's managed. Okay, let's go ahead and import. You can see here it's currently importing. And now it's been imported and I have the solution here. I can check the contents and I have my apps and so on in here. It also says you cannot directly edit components in here because it's a managed solution. So if I want to change something on top of this solution, I would need to create another unmanaged solution in this environment and start working from there. Now let's have a look at automating all this. So I'll go to my Azure DevOps instance and uh, I have a Power Platform ALM project in there. Uh, currently, I have not much in the repo, it's just a readme file, but what's interesting here is that I can work with it without actually having using the source control parts of it. I want to do this to automate my stuff. So I will create a new pipeline from here. Uh, I like the graphical stuff, I don't really like YAML, so I'll use the classic editor and then just select this is my repository I'm working against. You have to define that and start with an empty job. There's no template for this yet. So now I have my pipeline, I want to say, let's use the latest windows and uh, the agent job number one, I want to add tasks to that. Um, and this is the interesting part, when I can really add tasks that are specific for the Power Platform. So I'll just search for Power here, and I see I have a bunch of them there. Um, you can easily download those. These are for free, and this are, is the one from the Marketplace for Visual Studio, where you have Power Platform build tools. Uh, quite recently released, has the basic functionality you need. If you need more, uh, this one, the Power DevOps tools from Whale Hamsey has been around in a few different iterations and different names over the years. Very popular and it has a bunch of more tasks than what's available from the Microsoft ones. 
So anyway, I have these here. I will need to start with the, the tool installer to get the tools necessary for the task to run. Then I will start with, you, you never know if you have connected properly, so I better start with who am I? Just tries to sort of connect to the environment and make sure that that's working. Then what I might want to do is publish my customizations to make sure that the latest is there. And then of course, export solution. I have my solution, I want to export it to do stuff with it. And the, you can also add this Power Platform Checker. I will look into the details of that. And you use that task to automate this quality checks of the solution, including all its components there. So after that, I've exported the unmanaged, I've checked it, I want to change the version of the, of the solution. So I'll have the set solution version and then export as managed. And finally, uh, we also have the unpack solution we'll have a look at where you can unpack the zip file that's the solution to be able to check it into source control to keep track of the changes over time. So looking briefly at these tasks, the installer has no options really that you need to set. Uh, and then you start looking at the first one that connects to, <clears throat> to the Power Platform, to a CDS endpoint. You can use either username password or a server service principle where you have like an app ID and a client key and client secret and so on. Um, this is, a, of course, better to use in, uh, in more serious scenarios. For this uh, demo, I will use username password. Um, when you don't have any, you can just click manage there and to set up this one with the, where you use username password, just select the generic one and I'll show you what it looks like because I have two here, one to the Jonas Sandbox, which is the source environment. And you just see you have the URL to the, to the CDS endpoint, my username and then the password. That's it. Pretty simple. So you can define those for your source environment, for your target environment and so on. So I will select this one, Jonas Sandbox. This is where I'm exporting from. And then I can do the publish customizations. Same thing, it recognizes the same connection here that I'm using all the time. Then it comes to the fun part, export solution, first, uh, first fun part. So this is still the service connection. The solution name, uh, what did I call my solution? It was called ESPC20. So let's just put in ESPC20 there. And a trick with Azure DevOps pipelines is you can link this so that if this parameter shows up in more of the tasks, I can just keep the same link there. And the solution output file, this is where I want to put something tricky in. Uh, use a variable, a build variable. So this is a target file I want where the solution file should be exported. And it's my in my artifact staging directory. So when I publish the artifacts from this build, it will be included there as well. Uh, I will copy this because I'll use it later. Then we have the Power Platform Checker. I'll just show you what's in here. We won't go through this. This requires another service connection where you actually have a service credential for the an application in Azure that can host the checker process. Um, so basically you define the service connection, select the files, which is the exported solution files, and you can specify which rule set to use as well. App source certification, a bit tougher requirements, or just the solution checker. If you're running the DevOps tools from Whale Hamsey, you will also be able to specify specific rules instead of just the actual rule sets. Uh, so it can do a bit more than the out of the box Microsoft one here. I'll just disable this for now. Then we want to set the solution version and we will pick the sandbox and the solution name. I have that in my build variables. I'll just link it to the solution name. You see it will be SPC 20 here as well. And the version number, I will put that 100 and then and then this build variable, build number, that will return the number of this build. Uh, finally, exporting the managed solution from the sandbox and the solution name, again, we'll link it to this build variable and the output file, I'll just put this underscore managed so I can tell the managed non managed uh, solutions apart and I will check this export as managed. And finally, uh, you can do perform the unpack solution where you take the uh, in this case unmanaged solution file and put it in a target folder, I'll just call it like this. And this is then files that have been expanded from this zip file and you can commit it to source control. 
Okay, so now it's time to save and run this uh, build. Save and queue. And we can now see an agent job has been queued. And if we click into it, we can follow the progress of this uh, job. So the job is done and it finished uh, without any errors, all green check marks here. So let's just have a brief look at what happened. We had the who am I and we can see that it connected to my environment and uh, it finished with green uh, result there. Then published the customizations, we exported the solution. And as we can see here, uh, the file name that it was exported as was not the whole long build uh, artifact staging something, it's just this is the local path on the build agent and we have the solution file right there. So we have the set solution uh, task here as well. And then it exported the managed solution and uh, unpacked it so we can see it unpacked it into different entities and the workflows and so on that we added to the solution. And then it just uh, finished this build. So now we have created build. Let's create a release pipeline as well. <clears throat> to actually be able to deploy it somewhere. And we'll just create a new pipeline. And we'll do the same here, start with an empty job. We know what to do here instead. And we wanna start with adding an artifact. So we need the result of a build to be able to perform our deployment. So the source pipeline is the PPLMCI. I didn't change the name of it. So that's just the default name when you create a new pipeline. I want to always get the latest version. I could specify a specific version that we're deploying, but in this case, I'm just taking the latest all the time. So I have this artifact I'm using. I have one stage with zero tasks. So I will add a task to this. And this now in the same way, we have the power platform tools, the tool installer. We can perform the who am I, just to make sure that we are connected to the target environment and then a import solution task, and then we're done. That's all. So let's have a look, the installer, nothing, who am I? Service connection I talked about previously. Let's now select ESPC 20, that's where we wanna deploy this. And then import solution, I will select the same connection. So now we need to select which solution file to import as well. And we can actually select from the artifact that we created during this build. So I'll just expand this, and we can see we have the managed and the unmanaged solutions there. We also see all the unpacked files from this unmanaged solution. So we can see we have entities and under those we have form XML save queries and so on. So this is what you would normally commit to source control to keep track of the versioning of the customizations. So I'll select the managed solution. We always import managed solution in downstream environments. And that's basically it. So we can just uh, save this and create a new release. So we create it and we run it. And then we can see what happens in the target environment. So the release one is running. I can watch the logs by clicking here to follow the progress. So now it's done. We can uh, watch the progress here and uh, just like previous, we had the who am I, we have then the import solution, it found the file and it succeeded. So let's have a look in our Power Apps environment. Uh, when I imported it manually, it had version 1001. If we refresh this, I'll just click the refresh button. This is in the target environment. We should probably see a version update to that. Yeah, so now it's 100160 because 160 is the latest build that I now deployed using my release pipeline.